meeting for January 5th, 2017. Happy New Year, everyone. May I have the attendance, please? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mrs. Lyford? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Hobbs? Here. Mr. Vashon? Here. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, there are some adjustments to the agenda. Uh, executive session uh, is new in the agenda as 12.0, and then the adjournment has changed to agenda item 13.0. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to comment on anything on our agenda this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll close public comment. And right on to 6.0, the superintendent's report. Okay, so um, as promised, I have our monthly enrollment report. Things are pretty stable in terms of overall enrollment. Last month we were at 2,970 students, and this month um, at the end of December we were at 2,971 students. Um, just adding one student to Wentworth, one student to Blue Point, um, one student left at Eight Corners, and this population is the same at the high school and, the, and mid, high school, middle school, and Pleasant Hill. So again, the overall enrollment is 2,971. Um, then the second item for my report this evening is really introducing a guest speaker tonight. Heidi Randall is here with us from Maine Boys to Men. Um, and she's going to talk to us about the Scarborough District Plan um, for a program that we have to develop student leadership at the high school and also to begin educating our middle school students um, around, around reducing sexism and violence um, and using their program to do that. We uh, were introduced to this idea through the kindness, the Scarborough Kindness Project. Um, so Aaron Rowan and Michelle Hayes both um, have been attending our planning meetings and were a part of this strategic plan that we have developed. And we're really excited about it because um, we, we recognize that our students are dealing with lots of challenging social issues and um, through the work that Principal Creech has been doing at the high school with uh, creating an advisory program that's built into this schedule and also the academic enrichment program that's built into this schedule. Um, we've been thinking really carefully around what types of programs do we want to introduce to our students that can lead to um, not only educating our, our kids but also educating our community uh, and really building year after year. So we wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be something that was just a flash in the pan, one day sort of event, but that it was ongoing. Um, and what Heidi's going to talk to us about is how this allows us to really identify 40 students at the high school level, 20 boys, uh, 20, 20 students that identify male and 20 students that identify female, to, um, to have two days of full training, and then they really will become the advocates for our community and help us um, plan different events that could happen for the students, but also you know, for our whole entire community at, at large. And so um, Heidi will also talk about, in the plan, how we're going to be educating our eighth grade boys. That's going to happen first. Um, and then the training will happen with our high school students and the high school students will become um, the, uh, the ambassadors, if you will, of, of this, these ideas and will help us coordinate our uh, community viewing, which will happen on March 1st, and we're really excited about that. So this really tonight is just to introduce um, to you as the school board the work that's going to be happening, but also to, to start spreading the word um, to folks at home who are watching the school board meeting tonight, and then um, more information will be coming out in terms of like save the dates for the community viewing, and I'm sure your students will be coming home very soon all excited about what they're learning. And um, <clears throat> before I turn it over to Heidi, the other thing that I would add is um, thank you to our uh, principals for being here tonight, David, our high school principal, David Creech, and David Curry, our middle school assistant principal. Um, one of the things that, that Barbara Hathorne, our, our middle school principal, was really passionate about 
when we talked about introducing this work to the middle school level was making sure that we had a complementary program for our girls as well. So I know that um, the guidance department at the middle school is working with Hardy Girls Healthy Women um, to put together a program for, for the girls in middle school and then all of the eighth grade boys will go through the, uh, the main boys to men program, the RSVP program. So Heidi will do a much better job explaining it to you. It's really great work. We're super excited about it and we really think of this as just one piece of, of the puzzle. Um, this is one component of, of the work that we need to do with our students to ensure that um, they are they're gaining tools each and every year that they're with us to help navigate some of these challenging social issues that they're up against. So um, I thank Heidi for being here tonight and turn it over to you. for having Maine Boys to Men here to speak. Um, and I invite Oh, I need to yeah. uh, Thank you. I'll invite others in the room to just jump in at any point to to kinda add to our to the presentation. Um, we are gonna start with a clip, which I may need a little help finding. This is a trailer for the movie The Mask You Live In, and this movie we'll be watching as a, a full community, anyone who would like to attend. Um, it's the beginning of March, I believe, but it also just helps introduce the topic. Stop crying. Stop with the tears. Don't cry. Pick yourself up. Stop with the emotions. Don't be a pussy. Don't let nobody disrespect you. Be cool and be kind of a dick. Always keep your mind. Nobody likes a tattletale. Bros come before ho. Don't let your woman run your you life. You bitch. What a fag. Get laid. Do something. Be a man. Be a man. Grow some balls. The three most destructive words that every man receives when he's a boy is when he's told to be a man. We've constructed an idea of masculinity in the United States that doesn't give young boys a way to feel secure in their masculinity, so we make them go prove it all the time. Within their peer group culture, each of them is posturing based on how the other boys are posturing, and what they end up missing is what they each really want, which is just that closeness. In good times, guys are like really close to each other, but when things get a little bit worse, you're on your own. From middle school, I had four really close friends. Once I kind of went into high school, I struggle finding people I can talk to because I feel like I'm not supposed to get help. Our kids get up every morning. They have to prepare their mask for how they're going to walk to school. A lot of our students don't know how to take the mask off. What is it you don't let people see? Almost 90% of you have pain and anger on the back of that paper. If you never cry, then you have all these feelings stuffed up inside of you, and then you can't get them out. They really buy into the, a culture that doesn't value what we've feminized. If we're in a culture that doesn't value caring, doesn't value relationships, doesn't value empathy, you are going to have boys and girls, men and women, go crazy. I had anger issues in high school. I felt like an outcast. I've been suspended at least once every year I was here. We would just look for trouble and just like try to fight. Boys are more likely to act out. They're more likely to become aggressive. Most people miss that as depression or see it as a conduct disorder, or just a bad kid. I felt like just giving up on life. You know, I see had suicide thoughts in my head at sixth grade. I felt alone for, for a long time, and I actually thought about killing myself. Whether it's homicidal violence or suicidal violence, people resort to such desperate behavior only when they are feeling shamed and humiliated or feel they would be if they didn't prove that they were real men. If you're told from day one, don't let nobody disrespect you, and this is the way you handle it as a man, respect is linked to violence. If I can man up, why step down from that, you feel me? It's like instinct. Like a man. Be a man. Be a man. For my kids, I was going to end this hyper masculine narrative here. So, Main Boys to Men um, serves <laughs> to um, 
help end gender-based violence, um, and it also serves to help um, with the transition of boys to adulthood. Um, the can switch over to here. Um, so the three ways we do this is by supporting the healthy emotional development of boys, by working as leaders and allies. <laughs> in support of gender equality and reducing male violence against women and girls. To be continued. <laughs> Just to reinforce, the community viewing will be March 1st at the Scarborough uh, uh, March 1st at the Scarborough High School Auditorium at 7 o'clock p.m. So the Maine Boys to Men has, is primarily does this work by um, through a program called RSVP, which stands for Reducing Sexism and Violence Program. Um, and basically, the Reducing Sexism and Violence Program trains Maine students to feel prepared to respond and prevent gender-based violence and sexism. And so how we do that um, is we start with middle school boys ages 11 to 13. Um, we have two male facilitators who come in and spend actually four sessions with in small groups of boys. Um, and they run through like a whole curriculum. So they go back um, m multiple times over a course of a couple of weeks <laughs> and have these sort of small group trainings with young boys about um, gender identity and gender pressures around gender performance and respect and all these kind of important topics. Um, and as Julie pointed out, at the same time, there will be something happening for the young middle school girls as well. The next step in our program is the RSVP program for high school, where we work with boys and girls ages 14 to 18. Um, and how we do that, Julie began to explain that a little bit, is um, we have a two-day training. It's a 12 hours of curriculum um, where we work through and I'll get more into more into detail about that in a little bit. Um, and that is being set up at the at the high school. The teachers have already began recruiting students for that training. Um, and then those students go on to form a group um, and work with teachers and um, create events in the school to carry on the learning of what they did. What we know is that young people listen to other young people the most. And so it's really important to if we want to make kind of systematic change around a community, it's really important to have it be a youth-led change, have them be inspired and excited about the changes. We also work with um, at-risk boys and girls, and we do that through um, programs through Preble Street Resource Center um, at, um, I forget what the name of it, just left my mind, the Juvenile Detention Center here in Portland. I've completely forgot Long, the name. Long Creek. Thank you. Long Creek. We have a program <laughs> in Long Creek, um, an RSVP program that we work there as well. We also work with um, JMG populations across the state. In terms of an adult, uh, the adults, we um, have film screenings and community discussions of the movie The Mask You Live In. Um, we will be screening it as a community here in Scarborough, but you can also rent it on Netflix if you want to kind of get more information about that before the public screening. Um, following the screening, we offer community trainings and workshops for, for parents and teachers, um, 18 and older. Um, and then we also have intensive workshops if people want to kind of dive in deeper and have more information. Um, Another thing we do, which just so you know about us, is we have a boot camp for new dads um, where, where new dads kind of learn skills about communication, supporting mom, how to be a father, um, all that kind of stuff. So that's a, that's a really great program. But more about what's happening here at Scarborough. So this, as you can see, is a timeline <laughs> that we've been working as a, a team um, to come up with. Um, the program is starting in January with the, and with the programming in the middle school and then at the end of January with, in the high school. Um, the high school group that gets formed out of the training, um, it's really important for a group after it's been trained to um, feel successful right away, to feel like, um, to 
take the momentum of everything they've learned when students finish the training, they often feel really excited to share this information with other students. They really want to get it out to other people in their community. So we have actually already structured some sort of immediate successes, ways that they can take what they've learned and put it into action right away. Um, one of that is we'll be meeting right after the training just to kind of debrief how the training went and kind of plan out next steps. Um, the students will be meeting with the Leadership Council the 14th of February. They'll um, be presenting um, and meeting with the entire staff of the high school on February 16th. Um, and then in the, I don't know if it's like you call it home Advisor. base advisory. Uh, every school has a different name for it. <laughs> um, students will be showing the preview for the Mask You Live In and getting other excited students excited about coming to that screening. Um, as time goes on, I won't get into all the details because it's sort of in front of you, but um, there will be a panel of students at the Mask You Live In, so parents can sort of ask questions of those students about what was the training about, that kind of thing. Um, we'll be hosting a community workshop for parents and adults out of as a result of that. Um, the students who took the training will be meeting weekly and monthly to decide what kind of activities that they want to take on. Some things we've already talked about is um, potentially a senior day workshop prior to prom or graduation that kind of share to share information about what they learned and help people prepare for seniors prepare for going off to college. So that's just a kind of a sense of how we're really looking to use this kind of student led group to kind of saturate the community and work collectively with with the with everyone to to kind of feel supported in and supportive of of all different avenues of folks. So I think I will just talk a little <coughs> bit about the, the training in the high school, just be pretty quick about that, and then I've got another clip to show you. So again, this training um, really gives students, <coughs> allows students to feel prepared to respond to and prevent gender-based violence and sexism. Um, the, it's two days of training, six hours each day. Teachers will nominate the students from a cross-section of grades and social groups. Um, we're actually, the topics that are covered are gender, gender as a social construct, stereotypes the implement, and, and implementation, implications of um, pressure to perform gender, either as a female or a male, um, how to build true strength through healthy masculinity, strengthening our emotional capacity, healthy communication, healthy sexuality, boundaries and consent, cyber abuse, sexual harassment and assault, um, lots of we have a, we do a lot of training and examples and work through um, thoughts and questions around technology and how um, the current trends and technology around phone use and pictures and Facebook and social media and what kind of pressures young people face um, navigating those that, that technology and how to be respectful and what what does consent mean when it comes to technology very important stuff um, often the students say that. They're so grateful to have this training that they feel as though no one else in their life is talking to them about some of these issues in as kind of complete a way. So that's it's really great to hear that. Um, we'll also cover gender-based violence prevention, healthy relationship skills, bystander intervention, leadership, and action. So some of the things that the um, students have said about the training. I won't go through them all, but just kind of pick up a couple. Um, after taking this tr training, I'll question another guy's motives for making sexist comments and challenge him on it. RSVP trained and prepared me for life after high school. I can't imagine going to college without this information. When I see someone being treated badly, I now know how to safely intervene. So a big chunk of what we do is we, we end the, the second day, probably the second half of the second day is um, how, when, you're, when you see something, how can how can you take a moment and make a choice about how to intervene in a way that you're comfortable with? And noticing that everybody's comfort level is different. Not everyone is going to walk right into that situation and intervene, and that might always be the safe way. But there, we, we kind of give lots of examples about different ways that everybody can choose for their own comfort level how to do something about what they're seeing in front of them. That's really helpful. 
And I think what we'll do now is show the second clip. So we've done this training in, um, I would say, a dozen high schools in Maine. Um, we did, we've done it twice in the spring and in the fall in South Portland High School. And this is a short interview with some of the students who took that training this fall, um, right around election time. One of the local TV stations wanted to to interview some students about some of the trends that we were seeing in the news at that time. Unfortunately, Election cycle. A Unfortunately, a lot has been said about sexual assault, from the 2005 tape of Donald Trump on that bus to Bill Clinton's accusers. It has started important conversations, though, about consent, sexism, and violence. But what have our children learned? In tonight's Making the Grade, our Danielle Waugh tells us about a program in Maine schools to help kids understand and prevent violence against women. You can do anything. Whatever you want. From the infamous Trump tape to the presidential debate stage. Bill Clinton was abusive to women. The issue of sexual assault is prominent in politics, and children are watching. Their ideas and beliefs are being shaped heavily. Words mean a lot. Students at South Portland High School are sorting through all the messages about sexual assault they're hearing in the media and among their peers. It made me more aware that I gotta do something when an abuse happens to a girl. Through a program that's unique to Maine <laughs> called Boys to Men. We teach tools that allow them to not only notice it and then take specific actions to disrupt that uh, or intervene before it becomes violent. Through workshops and discussions, they're training middle schoolers, <laughs> teenagers, and new fathers how to recognize sexism and sexual violence giving them tools to intervene. Well, I've definitely learned not to be a bystander. I feel braver. Consent, consent's a big thing that we go over in this program. It really made me notice that, like, what I want in a relationship. Graduates of the program say they've learned critical life lessons. I think this is such an important program. That ordinarily wouldn't be a part of their schoolwork. It should be in, like, every school. Which could be why demand for these Boys to Men sessions has skyrocketed. Our programs have grown tenfold over the last 18 months. Executive Director Matt Theodorus says the Trump tape gets conversations started, but it's hardly an isolated incident. Certainly with the thousands of students that we work with, we do hear that this language is more common in school. So we have to step away from that video and acknowledge that we're in a, we are in a world, in a culture, where one of three women will be sexually assaulted or physically assaulted <coughs> in their lifetime. What gives him hope are students like this. This is happening in our schools, in our lives. Transforming from bystanders to change makers, from boys to men. This is the generation that is actually going to make tremendous change. In South Portland, Maine, Danielle Waugh, NECN. One in three, that is a horrible statistic. Boys to Men is one of the only pro uh, programs of its kind in the nation, working with ages from preteen to adult and bringing women into the conversation with men. It's made possible with funding from the Office of Violence Against Women. So I, I'd like to take a little time to answer questions. I could go on for a couple more hours about all the ins and outs and the here's and there's and um, but I definitely want to hear from you if there's anything that you would um, I'm really excited and enthusiastic about this program I want to thank leadership and everyone who's brought this together to make it happen and I'm just curious about after the initial implementation year how does the program keep moving forward in years to come how does it stay part of the community part of the curriculum yeah so I think I think what's important is um, that when a school makes a commitment that they commit to a partnership long term and that's what we've discussed and talked about and the great part about it is that the, where we're doing the work with the middle school students that they get that every year so that every year um, my I, as an educator myself um, rep it's all about repetition right so so if you're in the seventh grade and then you get it in the seventh grade and then you get it again in the eighth grade and then in the ninth grade you're part of maybe one of those 40 students or you're part of the activities that the 40 students are putting on. So the idea is that we'll keep doing the training and that the students will begin to lead the community events and choose the community events and kind of become sort of with in partnership with the adults in the community but that they will have some really good ideas about what activities they want to plan. But yeah, it's a commitment for for a long time. So that like 12 hours of content that you were talking about, that will keep happening every year. That's not 
you don't just get that group started and they continue it. No, nope, the plan is to come back. Yeah. And, okay. Yep. Great. It does. Yep. It's ironic that you're having a, we're having this presentation this evening because I saw a post today on Facebook, and it was posted by a dad and a divorced dad, and I think he said his two sons are six and four, and he was criticized by his friends because he said he was getting up early and getting flowers and going over and fixing breakfast for his ex-wife. And his friends were saying, what are you, crazy? And he said, no, I'm modeling what a man should do so that my sons will always treat their mother and women with respect. He said, just because we're divorced doesn't mean that I can't show my sons what it means to be a compassionate person. I thought that was fabulous. Yeah. I just thought that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. so, I've been aware of um, Boys to Men <laughs> since they started in Portland years ago. Um, I think what's important now is that even though our kids evolve and grow developmentally just as we have, for years. The difference now is that the world has changed and our kids are faced constantly, particularly at the middle and high school, bombarded with a variety of ideas that may not be good ones for them to have. And so a program like this brings it to the floor, brings it into discussion, and I think by bringing in outside, usually young people, to do the leadership and the work with the students, they have an opportunity to discuss these, these topics that are incredibly relevant today as we look at what's happening in our country. Yeah, um, can I just ad address her? Um, yeah, it's so interesting. You know, the, the messages that young people and the images, I think even more important, the images that they're constantly getting. Um, and and this, is, this comes up in our discussions and in our training. They would have them, the messages and images and ideas would have a young person believe that those images and messages are, are normal or they're, everybody believes this and everybody thinks this way. And, and then what happens is when, we, when we're away from those images in these trainings and it's young men and young women talking together very openly about all these topics, they begin to hear <laughs> that nobody really thinks like those images and they're like, I didn't realize, you know, and there's been some studies done on specifically with young boys and given the choice if they could have, um, have a girlfriend who they were not sexually active with or not have a girlfriend but be sexually active as often as they want, which would they choose? And all the boys think that all of the boys are choosing the no girlfriend, and in fact, all the boys are choosing they would rather have a girlfriend and not be sexually active. And so it's a really interesting how it's the messages are, are, tr are framing, you know, for young people their ideas, but they're not even sort of true to how young people feel and believe. And so when, when they get in these trainings and they start talking very openly about what they think and what they feel and what they believe and they see that other people feel similarly, it gives them a certain kind of confidence about themselves and their values and their decisions. And it changes the uh, the script, you know. Mm. It's very it's very powerful. Um, thank you for coming. This has has been great. I first learned about Boys to Men um, with the South Portland Boys Basketball Team. I remember watching that video probably 18 months ago. I think they were probably the um, beginning of that program in South Portland, and it, it was astounding. The video was just incredible to hear these kids who are next door and what they have to say. So I think it's going to be a great program for us, and, and it's exciting to know that it's coming. So thank you to the Kindness um, Project, too. That's great. I have a couple technical questions, you know. Um, the video that we just saw, that trailer, now, does, do the middle school kids see that as well? Okay. No, that that is uh, age 14 and older. Perfect. Yeah. I was getting uncomfortable. I was wondering yeah. about that. Yeah. I have a middle school daughter and a very young boy. And I was yeah. like, oh, my God, is that middle school? No. <laughs> don't, we don't do that. any technology stuff with the middle school at all. It's all just discussion and interactive-based. 
Yep. And as the chair of finance, I also have to ask, how is this all funded? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to love this answer. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I would. It doesn't cost anything. Perfect. I know. Really? That is Isn't that awesome? awesome? Say that again louder. My God, it doesn't cost anything. <laughs> Such abundance in the room right now. Isn't that the most amazing thing? We can all thank the Office Against Violence Against Women. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and it, does, it does cost, you know, school personnel and time and involvement and, you know, those pieces. I mean, there's a real cost attached to those. And so far, Principal Creech has been very willing to kind of figure that out with us. Um, it will. There be there will be faculty who work with the group. We'll we'll continue to work with the group too. But there, there needs to be a faculty presence. That kind of stuff for sure. Great. And we have two staff members at the high school who have already volunteered to be a part of this work. Mm -hmm. Michelle Shoup and Rich Wesley. Wesley. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful Great. for that. That's fantastic. Did you get that, Mike? Oh, you, you know. <laughs> I just have a I, I like the idea of the staff training too, and, and know that uh, notice that we're going to the high school on February 16th, something like that. Will you be doing a presentation to the middle school staff too? Because I think the staff training is so important too to understand what the students have been involved in and exposed to. Yeah, it hasn't. We don't have it on our agenda, but we can put it on there. Um, and ideally, the I, the plan is, and the students get really excited about, it, is that we work with them to create a presentation that they are the ones who deliver to both the high school and, in this case, the middle school faculty, so that they're really kind of owning the sharing of the information. That's good, because I think it's so powerful. Sometimes our staff doesn't get to see what some of the students might be involved in, and they're really an integral part in helping to develop the program with you. Very important. One of the groups uh, in Freeport High School that has, has started up, they actually, they do, it's called the gender box activity that they learn in the training. They do that with every sports team at the beginning of every sports season. So that's another great way of really kind of getting this out into the school community. That gets the coaches involved. Yeah, yeah. coaching yeah, it, coaches are huge, can play an incredible role in this, absolutely. That's great. So there's lots of different ideas. We, we like to have them come from the students, but we kind of whisper things in, in ears every now and then, too. Lizzie, go ahead. So I'm having a hard time kind of picking where to start with this. But first of all, thank you. Um, I am involved in a group at our school. It's the Student Health Advisory Board. And it's basically a group of students who are separated into two groups, one of which dealing with mental health and so they are focused on kind of mental health oriented projects and programs. And then another one that is, uh, we call it the Climate and Culture Group, and I am kind of the facilitator of that group. And so that is dealing with a lot of prejudices in school, um, but so often those overlap that we just end up working together anyway. Um, but. I am very, very excited about this program. I'm very excited about the prospect of even just showing the trailer to the students because it is such a real problem. Like today, I was sitting at lunch, scrolling through Twitter, and I saw something that a male student had tweeted, and I was just, I was angry, and then I was confused because I was like, I just don't understand how you can think that way and think that that is a normal thing to say. And then I realized that it wasn't even as surprising to me as it probably should have been because I hear it so often. And I think it's especially hard because I feel like a lot of our male students, and Thomas, you can tell me if I'm totally wrong, <laughs> I feel <laughs> like it is frowned upon for them to join this conversation. So I think having a program like this where it is, there has to be a certain amount of male students involved in this conversation because I know a large portion of our climate and culture group is female or identifies as female. And so it is difficult for us to bring this topic up in conversation because then it's oh, you're just complaining about that because you think it's negatively impacting your life. And it's, no, we think it's negatively impacting everyone's lives, but 
because of the ne negative impact it's having on people's lives, we're the only ones who are allowed to talk about it for fear of being, like, having prejudice <laughs> against us. But, so I think this is really super fantastic, and I will probably be at the movie screening, and I'll probably be crying, so <laughs> you can all look forward to that. But <laughs> so. Welcome. Thomas, Thomas, go ahead, Thomas. Uh, yeah, I, I'd just like to say as the um, only <laughs> male <laughs> on this uh, panel, um, in, in terms of my experiences in the school, um, th there's definitely a strong, strong feeling of a mask that you have to put on in certain social climates in order to be someone that you don't want to be. And uh, from my experience, I think that it oftentimes hinges on even like what uh, people what people um, think of as role models and possibly shouldn't be considered role models, which should be set as a standard. I think currently in our current culture is faulty on its own, at least. That's how I, uh, I've perceived it, especially, and I know a lot of people I've talked to have similarly perceived it. And I've talked to people of many groups and how they respond differently about certain figures um, that might be considered controversial and what they uh, respect about them and are not willing to criticize is, I think, telling to the climate in general, at least for men. And just to add to what Lizzie and Thomas are saying, that's why um, when we were talking about how do we identify the first 40 students, we wanted to be really sure that we were getting a cross-section sampling, if you will, of all of the different groups that exist in the high school, different grade levels, different social groups, um, students who already have demonstrated leadership potential, but also students who have some unlocked potential, um, and we put the list up there, but really just trying to make sure that everyone's involved and that way the messages are getting out to, to all aspects of our, our high school community. Um, I'm glad that, that the, we're going to try and get adults involved because I'm a former teacher. I taught in Portland for 20 years, and this is nothing new. But adults tend to say, oh, he was kidding. Or the student might say, oh, you know, I was just joking around. And people buy into that when... I've known parent after parent after parent who have defended their child uh, because uh, they were only joking. Well, it's not a joke to the person who's on the receiving end. It's not a joke to their friends. And uh, I've experienced that. I've seen it. I've had to address it. And... Uh, we have to we have to get to the parents as well. So I'm glad that we're going to make that effort, and I hope we're successful in doing that because it's not a joke at all. I'd just like you uh, add on to that. That um, <coughs> from my experience, joking is kind of a plague in a lot of ways because at least as a guy, at least for me, it feels like everything has to be a joke, that you can't have anything serious. You can't have a serious conversation or a sensitive conversation that can't be addressed. Yeah, we actually addressed that specifically in the training, the pressure on young men to perform masculinity in just that, in just that way. Yep. I just think it's an amazing opportunity for our community, and thank you so much for bringing it to us. Um, just the number of students it's going to touch in a positive way, it's incredible to think of the ripple effect that will happen for years. So I think this is like 
like lights are shining all over. I feel like, <laughs> yay, this is happening here. Good We're news so in the time of darkness. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> The time of darkness, yes. That's and a good, nice way to say that. And before I close, I just I just want to commend, you know, Scarborough because, you know, a different s schools approach things in different ways. And this, you know, this map that we've, we're have we working on here, this way that we're kind of mapping out our time and how to engage everyone, mm -hmm. um, we think is like a model to be passed on to other school districts. You know, we'll see how this year goes and then, and, mm -hmm. and think about it. But really that the way that we're kind of coming in and really saturating all the different pieces and, and having all these ways for anyone in the community to be involved, whether middle school, high school, parent, teacher, um, is really the way to do it. Um, so I really I commend you. It's, it's okay to do one piece, but it's way better to do them all for sure. Yeah. So thank you. And thank um, you. my name is Heidi Randall, and Julie knows how to get in touch with me, and I'm happy to call or meet for coffee or answer an email or whatever it is that you need. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have anything else for your report? That um, concludes my report for this evening. Okay. That takes us to 7.0, the chair's report. And mine is basically more of an announcement. Um, through unavoidable circumstances that have arisen, Kate Miles is temporarily moved out of Scarborough. And unfortunately, this renders her ineligible to continue to serve on the school board. And so we're announcing tonight that there's a vacancy that will be filled by a special election. And we don't have the details yet because that's set by the town council. And they haven't met, obviously, to, um, to set a date. but. In my conversations with Todi, the town clerk, she told me it would be within 60 days. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a candidate, be in touch with Todi, pay attention to the town council. Um, and with that said, um, we absolutely thank Kate for her time on the board and we're sad to see her go. She was a unique voice that um, really brought a lot to our decision-making process and to our discussions and it's unfortunate but um, this is where we are so with that said I um, move to declare the seat currently held by Catherine Miles is vacant as of this meeting and that such vacancy will be filled pursuant to the town charter second you don't have any discussion anyone Jody um, I worked with Kate on communications and you know, she she did bring a unique voice, and there were often times that um, she would challenge me, and and I appreciate that challenge because I think it made us, me, I'll speak for myself, look at things in a different way, um, and sort of come at it from different perspectives. So I appreciate that, and and I wish her well, and and hopefully see her around. Mm -hmm. I would add on to that that. Um, she had a real skill set in terms of uh, mm -hmm. writing and um, critical thinking that was really um, valuable to the school board and um, and a really unique perspective um, that will be missed. Be missed. She'll mm -hmm. be missed. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Six plus two. <coughs> okay. So like I said, we don't know the details yet, but um, and that's my understanding, it will be within 60 days. So, moving on to 8.0 committee reports. Next, we'll start down with finance. Okay, so finance <coughs> met earlier this <coughs> evening at 6.30. We had an abbreviated meeting um, and are just starting the gearing up for the budget process and discussed the calendar that will um, be finalized at the January 19th Joint School Board and Town Council Finance um, Committee meeting. That will be, again, January 19th at 2 o'clock, I believe here in Chambers. Um, and then at that point, we will finalize these dates and times and have that posted <coughs> on the website. Some of the highlights that, that are confirmed that um, the public may be interested in is that the budget forum will be held April 26th at 7 p.m. 
and then the budget validation vote is scheduled for June 13th. Um, we also talked about the audit, which um, happened this fall, um, late fall, and we've got both reports back from the town and the school side of things, and there'll be a joint discussion um, with the school board and the town council and the auditors from MacPage probably later this month. <coughs> that no date was all. That yet. Not yet. Excuse me? No date for that yet. No date for that yet. Okay, thank you. Policy? Um, well, policy um, hasn't met again since our last board meeting, and we will be meeting in two weeks from now, right before the board. And, but however, I did attend the business and school um, group this morning that met uh, at Wentworth. This is um, a really interesting group of people because we're pulling in a variety of businesses from around um, Scarborough. And uh, we, we spent quite a bit of time talking about how would we go about creating a program that would really um, cause us, our students to have a, a significant community learning experience. Uh, and might that be a part of our high school requirement? Um, we also talked about how we can bring in more businesses because what we're hearing is from the business side is that they don't know what's going on in our school system and there's a lot going on. And um, also that businesses want to be a part of what's going on and don't know how to go about doing that. So uh, the outcome of this morning's meeting was that um, there's three spin-off groups that will be um, working as subcommittees within this, with, with this, within this committee that will cover things like uh, what would be the protocols then to have businesses reach into the school system and how will our staff and, and our employees know that there are business opportunities available for students in the community. Um, and also there'll be a communications group that will be working uh, through Karen Martin's leadership that will be reaching out to businesses to develop more uh, program, uh, more relationships with them. And um, finally, there'll also be a group that I have signed on to that will be uh, working with Mr. Creech at the high school to talk about what what might a program look like if if uh, the town and the school board in particular were to consider a graduation requirement that would include a community service community learning project service learning project and um, so it was a very interesting meeting it sounds like it's a very energized group, the people that are on the committee from UNE, USM, SMCC, uh, our high school, a uh, few guidance counselors are involved in, in this and community leaders uh, also have stepped forward to be a part of this. So it's an interesting piece that might develop. Great. Thank you. Long range planning, Matt? No. <laughs> that's uh, Dan, uh, Dan Cecil's uh, presentation at our last board meeting, so there's nothing on that new front. So as the uh, superintendent pointed out, we're watching our enrollments and we're matching them up with what planning decisions has said, so <coughs> we'll just keep tabs on that. Um, I have the vocational meeting coming up on January 19th, mm -hmm. so that's it. Okay. Want to say that what our next meeting is? <laughs> I was just going to add that um, we will. We're trying to coordinate with Harriman so that our next workshop meeting can be that long-range planning discussion that was requested after mm -hmm. the presentation at our last meeting. Communications? Nothing new to report. We haven't met. We meet tomorrow at two o'clock. Okay. Okay. Uh, Maine School Boards Association. Uh, We'll meet this Saturday and discuss the layout of what's going to, how we're going to address the legislative issues coming up. And, and the negotiations group, 
we'll be meeting with the bus drivers uh, on the 19th. We've received a communication from the association to negotiate with the support staff. We've not uh, met on that as yet. Uh, the stipend committee, uh, subcommittee, that was determined by the teacher's contract will be meeting uh, the last week of the month. January 25th. Uh, Operation Cupid Planning Committee, which I'm on, We'll be meeting on the 12th at Mr. Griffin's room at the middle school. And the evening of Operation Cupid will be on February 9th at the middle school library at the moment. You used to have it at the cafeteria. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, th those are just the updates. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And moving on to the Student reports, 9.0. Um, so I guess I'll go first. I have a couple things from high school. So on December 15th, we had our big holiday band and chorus concert, which was a huge success. Um, Mr. Volker, the chorus director, and Mrs. Richardson, the band director, did a fantastic job, as normal. Um, uh, and on December 22nd, we had our in-school chorus concert, which featured the members of the select chorus, concert chorus, and the jazz chorus, as well as a handful of really talented soloists. Um, and that was for students whose teachers let them take their class periods and come watch the chorus perform, um, as well as senior citizens who came in. Um, and so after that, the Alternative Education Program hosted the Empty Bowl Project, which was uh, they spent this semester uh, hand making bowls, um, ceramic bowls, which were then sold with soup in them to spread awareness about hunger locally and to also raise money for Preble Street. Um, and that was a huge success. Unfortunately, I was not able to get any soup because I was bussed off to go Carol. But it was, I've heard it, it was, was great. great soup. It was so. great, actually. <laughs> it was really, really good soup. <laughs> um, so, yes, those were both very successful courses. Uh, course concerts. Um, the Oak Hill Players Theater Group is putting on a spring musical. So they will be putting on a production of Grease in early May. Um, it's mm. a student-led production, which is featuring student producers as well <coughs> as a student choreographer. Um, and so auditions have been, or are actually happening now and yesterday. Um, and so they will be finding out about casting soon, and there will be details about show days and times coming very soon afterwards. So, Great. very exciting. And these two youngsters have auditioned. <laughs> we did. We got that done yesterday. <laughs> Good work. Yeah. Put it all in. <coughs> yeah. But, um, and then also, high school students are getting ready for their midterm exams, which are going to be the week of January 16th and then also the Monday after that. So, good luck, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, in terms of the middle school in Wentworth, um, so on January 10th, the eighth grade uh, class will be having the COGETS, the Cognitive Abilities Test, and that is very important for identifying reasoning and uh, problem-solving skills and judgment skills. And those tests are very important for identifying uh, potential GATE students who will be tested further um, <coughs> for accelerated learning. Mm -hmm. um, the chorus and sixth grade band concerts will be held on January 23rd. The seventh and eighth grade band concerts will be held on January 24th. And I know so, uh, some, at least one of the, uh, some of the music is coming from, for example, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. So that should be interesting, yeah. especially if you're into yeah. Harry Potter. <laughs> In terms of Wentworth, uh, Wentworth D.A.R.E. program will graduate its students on January 13th. These students were not only educated into the dangers of drugs and alcohol, but also how to deal with situations that involve those problems. And uh, the fifth grade students will also be taking the COGATS and for the same reasons to identify stellar students to get an idea of people's reasoning and problem solving skills. Okay. 
Thank you. That takes us to 10.0, recognition. So I was just going to also recognize mm -hmm. the Alternative Ed Program for the Empty Bowl project. It was, really was amazing. Um, I learned that they raised $1,300 for Preble Street, and they made over 200 bowls um, by hand, each one unique and all really, really nice, hand-painted as well. So um, thank you to the Alternative Education students for all of that great work. And the soup was delicious, and I was surprised to know that all of the soups were made by high school staff, Scarborough High School staff. Uh -huh. So. I don't know who won the soup off, but she made a recipe. Soup off. Or something. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if there was any voting. I, I don't think vote. there was any voting. Um, and then the other uh, recognition that I wanted to make was um, on behalf of the Scarborough Ed Foundation. They have uh, awarded over fourteen thousand dollars in innovation scholarships. Um, this round of the grant applications and just to give the community an idea of what some of those applications were um, at Wentworth uh, Judy DiMucci and Crystal Goodrich uh, wrote a grant for self um, monitoring independence for students with attentional challenges and so they were awarded nine hundred and fifty five dollars and thirty nine cents to purchase um, Vibrolite mini watches that will that use uh, vibration on the wrist at pro programmable intervals to help students attend to tasks and to monitor when they're off task. So they were able to they'll be able to with those funds purchase 20 units for that. Um, <coughs> our uh, music teacher at Wentworth, Chris Fletcher, was awarded five thousand dollars, and there will also be a contribution from the Scarborough Arts, Arts Council for him to purchase African marimbas. And so this co-funded project will allow students at Wentworth to experience um, and explore a Zimbabwean style marimba music that um, Mr. Fletcher will be helping them with, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. I and just want to add that Mr. Fletcher was on 207, 207 I saw with the marimba yes. band, yes. and oh. they are playing this weekend at Longfellow Cafe yeah. on Friday night. Yeah. He's cool. in a marimba band. Yeah. Very so cool. cool. Yeah, really cool. Um, at the middle school, Kara Laflemme, a seventh grade teacher, uh, was awarded $2,000 for flexible learning furniture. And so she's going to use this furniture in her classroom to create adaptive learning experiences for her students and hopes that it's going to increase their achievement and allow them to focus better on their academics. Um, at Eight Corners, one of our first grade looping teachers, Sarah. Am I saying that mm -hmm. right? Last names are challenging for me. Canaris. Canaris. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she is also uh, also earning or er, was awarded two thousand dollars for uh, innovation classroom furniture, classroom seating alternatives that will allow students to have choice on where they sit, how they explore, um, and she's going to be evaluating. Um, their performance dependent upon the choices that they make with their flexible seating options. At the high school, Michael Carroll is an environmental science teacher who was awarded $1,450.21 to be specific um, <laughs> to have trout in the classroom. And so this will allow trout. Trout, trout allow him to purchase supplies and materials necessary to grow trout from eyed eggs to fingerlings, which are like two to three inch fish, in a big tank in the classroom, and the students will observe the metamorphosis from the egg to trout, monitor, um, and control variables critical to trout survival to better understand ecosystems. Cool. So that's really cool. Um, and then at Wentworth, our STEM teacher, uh, Sarah Ethern, will was awarded $2,774, and she the title of her grant was Empowering Students to Make Positive Change in Our School Gardening Community. And the, uh, this funding will allow students to create and design interactive ornamental fence in the Wentworth School Garden with wind sculptures and begin to implement an alternative energy program by installing a human-powered bicycle generator. Cool. Oh, so cool. really awesome. cool stuff. And um, for those who don't know, what the Scarborough Ed Foundation does is they allow teachers to write basically a grant about anything that's innovative. And the idea is that um, this seed money allows them to begin to explore new ways to implement the curriculum and to um, really bring the most rigorous, relevant materials to our kids. 
and then the idea is that after they've tested it out, then we decide what is scalable and how we would um, further support it across the grades and across the curriculum. So thank you again to the Scrubber Ed Foundation. It's really an incredible um, foundation that <coughs> works by volunteers and they bust their hump to raise money throughout the whole year to, to offer these grants to our teachers. So it's a big thank you to the Education yeah. Foundation. Okay. Absolutely. I just wanted to add one more recognition to the chorus because not only was the concert just really fun to watch, when the students from classes that were available to come and be in the audience, I mean, it, they went from 18 to age 8 singing along. With, it was a nice touch. They came down into the auditorium and were like doing sing-along songs. Mm -hmm. And those high school kids were getting into it. They were singing all those songs <laughs> like it was, you know, they were third graders, and it was awesome and fantastic to see. Everyone's having a lot of fun. And um, I've heard compliments all over town about your caroling. When you went yeah. place to place, people really appreciated that. And it's nice for people in the community who don't have the opportunity to come into the school to see things that are happening. So um, please thank Mr. Volker about that because he that was fantastic. and. He's done a great job, as far as I can see. Brandy New, yep. doing a great job. So thank you, everybody, <coughs> for that. Um, moving on to new business. <coughs> 805, we're cranking right through. Okay, so 11.1, um, .1, meeting minutes of November 17th. Do I have a motion? Move approval as presented. Second. Any amendments or comments? All in favor? Six plus two, thank you. 11.2, middle school winter season two coaching appointments. So various school staff and community members have been nominated to fill these positions that will be funded through the general fund. The recommendation is to appoint the middle school winter coaching positions as presented in agenda item 11.2. Move approval, Move approval is, presented. is presented. Second. Any questions or comments? Christine? I have a question here. It says middle school winter part two. Right. Yeah. So we've seen some. So is this There's two yeah. winter There's seasons? two winter seasons at okay. the middle school. All right. Well, I. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Take care of that. So just one fill to fill. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> okay. All in favor? Six plus two. Thank you. Okay, 11.4, second reading of policy IHBAA-R. <coughs> oh, no, I just crossed off the wrong one. IHBAA, referral and general education interventions. This is a second reading. We have a motion? Second. And Donna, you want to? Well, um, uh, all of the um, policies that we'll be looking at the second reading this evening are policies that the policy committee <laughs> has looked at. We brought them to you for the first re review, and so now we're uh, <coughs> you know, looking at you know, agreeing to these. There are no changes in any of these to what we previously had. Uh, there's one typo <laughs> that uh, included the word two that we decided on, but Everything else is really exactly as it was previous First to day. looking mm -hmm. at them. So, Thank you. any questions or comments? All right, all in favor? Six plus two. Thank you. Eleven point four. Second reading of policy IHBAA-R referral procedures and general education interventions. Move approval is printed. Second. And Donna. Anything different about this one? Nope, uh, okay. nothing new. Just, you know, as you recall, Child Find was IHBAC, right? No, Sorry. IHBAAR. <laughs> and that's the one we have a copy of that was that one. Right, right, right. The referral procedures and general ed interventions. Yep. Yep. Is there a the reason why we had a <coughs> copy at our. Because um, yeah, go ahead, the John. change of the word to okay. added to it. Oh, yeah. right. Just make sure we saw that change. Yeah, you had found that too. Yes, I did. And I just have one other thing that I found, and it has nothing to do with the policy, except at the end it says approved by the superintendent on September 5th, 2003. None of our other policies say that. 
Is there a need for that? Hmm. I don't know why that would oh, be there. None of our no. like. I think back then there was a committee that worked with the superintendent on some of these because there were new policies coming. Okay. Because in 2003 these were coming new to the district. Gotcha. Well, I. Hello. Mr. Okay, all in favor? Six plus two. Thank you. 11.5, uh, second reading of policy ACAA, harassment and sexual harassment of students. Move approval is printed. Second. Any questions or comments about this one? Unchanged from the first reading. Okay. All in favor? Six plus two. Thank you. May we back up a second? Yeah. I was holding this in my hand, wanting to ask the question, and IHBAC. Have we done that no, yet? No, we have no, not. No, we're not there yet. <laughs> two more down. I know. They all sound the same. <laughs> okay. Um, 11.6. Second reading of policy ACAA-R, student discrimination and harassment complete procedure. Move approval is printed. Second. Any questions about this one? Okay, all in favor? Six plus two. 11.7, second reading of policy IHBAC, child find. Move approval is printed. Second. Second. The question is, there, there is no revision date on this one for this year. On, on the back. back? Oh, second page, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's all there is on there, so it's all right. <coughs> okay, all in favor? Six plus two. 11.8, second reading of policy JKAA, use of physical restraint and seclusion. Move approval is printed. Second. Any questions on that one? Okay, all in favor? Six plus two. 11.9, second reading of policy JKAA-R, procedures on physical restraint and seclusion. Move approval is printed. Second. Okay. All in favor? Six plus two. Okay, now, 11 minutes <coughs> later, we're at 12.0. <laughs> um, I make a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056C for the purpose of discussing the collective bargaining agreement between Scarborough Board of Education and Scarborough Bus Drivers not to return to public session. So moved. All in favor? Thank you.